Hey Asian friends, Jenny and I wanted to remind you to make time for your health so you don't lose time for the things you love, like hanging out with friends, going to your hip hop pole dancing class, and talking about your favorite Asian Not Asian podcast episode. So get an updated COVID vaccine. Updated COVID vaccines restore protection that has decreased over time, including protection against severe illness, hospitalization, and the worst effects of COVID. If your last COVID vaccine or booster was before September 2022, it's time for an updated vaccine. Find updated COVID vaccines at vaccines.gov. We can do this. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Hello there. This is uh, the Asian Not Asian podcast. Um, this is a special episode, uh, one that we're doing remote. Um, and before we start, I just wanted to say very quickly, um, you know, we love you guys and we think you guys rule. I uh, just want you guys to know that. I don't know why I'm prefacing it that way, but I think it's just important <laughs> for us to say that up front because I think it's pertinent. So, um, yeah, that's it. I'm Mike Nguyen. I'm Jenny Arimoto. Yay, Jenny. Yay. Hi. How's everyone doing? <laughs> How's everyone doing? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Uh, I got my mood lighting on here. And, I know. Uh, we're I was going to say. You look like a gamer, like a like you would be stream a Twitch streamer, you know. I bought all this gear for when I was uh ben during the pandemic when we thought we're all going to become Twitch streamers. So I have all this yeah. lighting and equipment for that, and uh, now Is that I use really it. Why? Yes, really. I have oh, all this wow. stuff for that, uh, and yeah. I've it was a huge waste of money. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> it yeah, looks very uh, nice. Thank you, thank you. You look great. Oh my gosh, thank you. I, I love your no zip, half zip. On. Oh, this is my aunt's old one, obviously. Oh, Everything I wear bangers. is my aunt's old clothes. Everything's bangers. <laughs> Always bangers, all the time. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jenny, I want you to kind of take a lead on this and however you want to do it. And Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Okay, so I, as you may have noticed, I've been missing from the last two episodes, but also I already said it on Instagram, so I told sure. Mike... I would love to start podcasting and also to be honest, I wanted to kind of get back into the swing of normal life because I have been dealing with the death of my father. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how yes. else to say it. I've been making a lot of like, I've been saying it a lot because I think mm -hmm. functionally, ooh, I might cry too, but these tear ducts, they've been loose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, oh, it started once I said it. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. These You got such loose tear ducts. They're, They're so, so loose. loose. They're so um, loose, Jenny. <laughs> I've let these babies go wild. <sighs> um, I felt ready to talk about it, and I think I am. But, um, yeah, my dad passed very suddenly, um, and I've been back in California. Actually, the last episode uh, where we, I talked about my layoff <laughs> was the day he yes. had his heart attack. Um, uh, which yes. is, it's just been a wild ride for those of you mm -hmm. who may have been listening. Um, but the short of it is my dad has had heart issues prior and um, he had a heart attack and he were in the hospital for a week and he ended up passing, which is obviously very sad. But also, I also like to say, very my dad. <laughs> he like... He always said he wanted to just go, which wow. he absolutely did. Um, and he did it doing his favorite walk, which we told him he did not have to do such a hard walk, but he's very stubborn. He's a Taurus. Um, mm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've been gone dealing with that. Um, and I was like, you know, I feel it's probably for me better to just start doing this, like, talking about it and yep. uh, like just easing my way back into comedy because to be honest, like I have forgotten that I do comedy, <laughs> but sure, then I'll start yeah. talking to my, my family here and I'm like, God, I'm so annoying. And then I'm like, that's right. Cause, cause I do comedy and I haven't had any outlet. So I'm like, I have to, I have to start doing this again or else I'm going to like be so insufferable to my family. Has, um, has your, so, um, has, has your sister and, and mom have, and your family, have they been saying that? Like, Oh my God, Jenny, you need to be on a podcast. Go out and go, go do a podcast, Jenny. It's you're making it sound so much more of a positive intonation than how they're saying it. They're like, I'll, I'll start talking at dinner 
and it's so loud and annoying and it's like monologuing and they're just like you need to go start doing comedy again and i'm like yeah <laughs> i'm so annoying um my outlet has been gone and so i was like i gotta get back on the podcast and start talking um but yeah it's been uh i la- it happened end of january i've been here since it's now mid-february yeah. um and uh it's crazy to think that uh I lost <laughs> my job and my dad in like this three week period. Right. Um, which has been crazy, but like, I, I think I've been like, it's so weird. I've changed a lot in the last four years, like internally. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, it's so crazy to say that, uh, these two huge life events while concretely changing my life, has not really shifted me as a person, um, yep. which I think is more reflective of the fact that a lot of the internal stuff that I've been working on, which is like prioritizing me and uh, my relationships over like professional success and uh, I don't know, like the more materialistic stuff has, um, and like me becoming a full version of myself has been a really, I mean, great timing for all that work because now it's like this stuff is happening and it's so crazy to say this, but it has fundamentally not changed me or my life. In fact, has confirmed the decisions I've made, which I think has been very interesting because I think the way people have been approaching me has been like so like wonderful and kind, but also with this like, I'm sure everything is like so insane and crazy and like changing who you are. And I'm like, that part actually is not, is actually weirdly. Okay. Like concretely my days are weird right now. Um, it's full of stress, like dealing with like the concrete stuff of my dad and life after my dad. But like internally, I feel very like the same, like nothing has shifted. I want to keep doing comedy. Um, yeah. And, uh, I'm like proud of who I am and proud of the relationships I've built and, um, feel very validated in this life I've built in New York. So it's been this very interesting experience of like, I think if I were still me who was like really, uh, really, really required external validation and was Mm -hmm. doing, um, a full-time job and worried about like doing the right thing and being achievement oriented in terms of like making my parents proud, um, I would be right now like rocked to my core because I'd be like, yes. what is the point of life? Right. But I did a lot <clears throat> of that stuff in the pandemic, like starting in 2020. Um, and so weirdly right now, it's been, I don't feel that rocked yeah. from that standpoint. So, yeah, so, you, so you're uh, saying, yeah. it sounds like you're saying that you did a lot of the work to kind of know who you are. Because, yeah. I mean, obviously, there's nothing that can prepare you for this. And this is, you know, probably uh, one of the most difficult times you're going to face, let's hope, uh, in your life. That, uh, but, but you're saying, it sounds like you're saying that you did the work in order to know, know who you are. And you still have the same priorities going into this. Obviously, things are different, but you still right. know your fundamental priorities. Yeah, I think 2020 for me... Uh, was realizing that, like, with the pandemic, I was like, oh, my God. Like, life is, like, it could end at any moment. Like, you know, people were sure. dying everywhere. Like, l- yeah. all of a sudden, humanity was very fragile. Uh, people lost their jobs left and right. Yeah. Like, like, you know, BLM happened. Like, all this stuff was, like, pulled out under where I was like, who cares if I mm-hmm. get an email out on time to a client? Right. Because anything can like fall apart at any moment. And so that was like that, that was the moment where I had that awakening where I was like, Oh, life is like a finite thing. It's like what you make of it. All these systems that, and things that we prioritize are like, um, things that we have been told to prioritize by like, sorry to be this like person, but like a lot of like capitalistic, capitalistic things. And, um, that's the, that's the, that's the special word of, of this podcast. (laughs) And you did it. Capitalism. Thank you. Capitalism. Like I had this big like thing where I was really shake, uh, shake, like my core was shaken during that time. And so I did a lot of like that work and I, you know, obviously like I'm not thinking about my parents' death, but like death is like, 
wasn't, I don't think it shifted my being in the same Mm. way. Mm -hmm. So it's really just confirmed that the decisions I made, which was to like live a life that I am proud of and happy with has, has kind of like happened. And then this has just confirmed that like, yes, when you die, you don't die with your money. Um, what's important when you die is not like, you know, how many hours of billings, client billings that you did or whatever, or the grades that you got in college. What matters is like the relationships that you build, like, and the life that you have, um, and like the love that you have in your life. And I think like that has been fundamentally unchanged in this experience, if not confirmed in this experience. Mm, Wow. So it's very interesting because I'm like, yes, functionally my life has changed, but fundamentally I have not changed. Yeah. Um, and I miss my dad a lot, but like, I feel weirdly okay. And I think mm-hmm. he would be good with that. He'd be like, good. Um, <laughs> That's like that with a thumbs up. Yeah. Good. I mean, honestly, he'd be like nice. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's been a very interesting experience. Like, uh, grief is nonlinear as everyone has yeah. kind of told me who's experienced this. Um, or grief in general, like at a, in a level that's intimate. Um, there are, it's like full of also love. Like I'm Mm -hmm. spending a ton of time with my family. Um, Mm -hmm. like we're laughing a lot. Like it's very odd. Um, start a podcast. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And my, um, friends are like checking in on me, which has been like in this, people are, are showing up for me in like such a big way. Um, and I think, that has been also confirmation of like the the relationships I've built in my life, like in the last four years, especially in New York. Um, I'm like, oh my God, I've like built such good relationships. Mm-hmm. That has also been confirmed in this experience. Like I think a lot of things that I've already like fundamentally were like believed in and like put my time towards is now being validated in this experience. Um, and so it's just so odd because I think a lot of people will be like, you know, at the end of this, you realize what matters is like living life to the fullest and whatever, like building your, like really being like full of love and whatever. And I was yeah. like, I already, I already did all that. This yeah, is all yeah, just saying, yeah. yes. So it's been like kind of this weird experience, like weirdly positive <laughs> considering mm-hmm. the source, um, which I think is also kind of a blessing and maybe just like in my family specific to me, cause I, I had I've, I'm the comedian in this family. You know, like I'm the mm-hmm. one doing this with my life. Um, yeah. The other crazy part is um, because of my layoff, which happened Friday, I could yes. talk to my dad on the phone, which I don't usually wow. do because he yeah. doesn't text. Uh, right. He never turns on his cell phone um, mm. because he doesn't want people to call him, which I was like, well, doesn't that defeat the purpose of a cell phone? Yeah. Um, and so that day I called home and I had a very short conversation with my dad because I was apparently cutting, my reception was bad. Um, and he told me, hey, it's no big deal. Like, I think this is a sign that you got to do comedy. He's like, you really? know, like... He said that? Yeah. Yeah, well, he's your dad like... Sounds, I mean, he, he seemed like a cool guy. I, I, I never met him. I never got the pleasure. But I, you showed me one photo of him and he was uh, in the <laughs> uh-huh. photo. He's like lounging and watching tv or something and i was like this guy seems like a cool guy he (laughs) seems like like a good dude (laughs) he was such a good guy um and yeah that was our last conversation it was like very my dad short and sweet he was like yeah hey i'm sorry like (laughs) hey i'm sorry that's that's too bad but hey like hey this is a sign this is like your sign to really do comedy like just you gotta really do it though jenny like really write if you want to write just wow. no more no more wasting time don't hang like, out with this mike guy anymore just yeah. keep going stop doing your stupid little podcast and write <laughs> your goddamn pilot script um wow but yeah that was our last conversation um, you, did, you didn't get a you didn't get a chance to talk to him i guess before um when he was in the hospital no he was not conscious yeah. but okay. that was truly it was friday i got laid off talked to my dad saturday i did the podcast where i talked about getting laid off Yes. Saturday night, I found out he's in the hospital. Sunday, flew back. That was like yeah, you, a series of events. Uh, you were having dinner with someone and, and that person... Um, who were you having dinner with? You were with... Um, Kimmy. Kimmy Ann. Kimmy, yes. And then Kimmy was like, said, told me that you like left in the middle of the dinner. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I think you had texted me like right, right around then too. So I kind of knew something was going on. So um, 
And I'm glad. I mean, you know, we, you know, you and I t- texted a little bit. I wanted to give you your space. <clears throat> yeah. But, um, you know, then you texted, you know, we, we kind of were like, let's, let's chat. And, uh, cause we had to just take care of like a bunch of like kind of administrative things. I just yeah. were like piling up. I was like, Hey, I need to like disperse this money to you. So, yeah. and uh, you're like, Hey, I'm, I want to come back. I was a fully of, uh, you know, I was thinking about it and I was thinking it's completely in the realm of possibility that Jenny, uh, decides to maybe not do not stop comedy but go back home and and a lot of people do that i've known a lot of people they you know they have to take care of family stuff and so they do and that's a completely legitimate reason yeah and i was not that i was not in the i'm i'm not in the position to to tell you hey hey kid don't give up your dreams (laughs) uh but i was like fully uh, like thinking about how to how would i convince you not to you know not to i guess I don't want to say act rashly because obviously this is a, it would be completely legitimate for you to go pick up and go back to San Francisco Bay area. But at the same time, I, I would, I was, I was thinking, are, are, is she going to kind of go that direction? And, it's, and fortunately you're like, I want to do the podcast. And I was like, you're back, <laughs> you're ready to do this. And I thought it was, I thought it was cool. I thought it was brave of you. I mean, at the same time, I'm like, um, you know, this is like a comedian's reaction to something like this is to to kind of just like I need to go and I need to be out there again. You know, totally. I think like talking about it helps me process. This is the therapy in me, you know, like sure. externalizing it lets me un- like think through it and forces me to process it. And so I was like, you know, I, it would help me help me personally also just to be very open about it. Um Cause I think we, I think some people don't, a lot of people don't process in the same way maybe, but I yeah. do think there's something about like putting words to what is going on in my brain that helps me mm-hmm. um, make it concrete and less anxiety ridden. Cause I think it, it feels a lot more amorphous and difficult to deal with yeah. if, in, when it's in my head. So I'm like, honestly, even if I cry, which I already gorgeously did within the first three minutes, Beautiful. um, <laughs> I like rather that be public and uh, not public. I don't need this to be public. That's the comedy in me. I, I right, rather right, it right. be out, out of my mouth and out of my brain yes. um, than for it to be sitting inside of here. Because I think uh, th- I'm just like day to day trying to figure out who, everything. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And I um, honestly, I was like, if I don't remember who I am, Because it's very easy in this period to get swept up in, like, the family stuff. Of course. Oh, I need to be the oldest daughter or whatever. Like, I need to do these tasks. Like, I need to be here in these ways. But then I was like, oh, my God. I'm, like, forgetting that I'm a person outside of this experience. (laughs) With, like, an apartment in New York. And, like, friends and, like, shows I'm skipping out on. Like, I think I need to, like... You've missed so many shows. (laughs) I've missed so many really important underground improv shows. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was like, I don't want to in this process, like lose who I am because I think yeah. like, then it makes it extra easy to like fall into a depression or something like that. Like yeah. I need to have some optimism and forward movement as well. And also yeah. like just grounding myself in like life pre this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of why I was like, Mike, I need to do the podcast, even if you're, it's remote. <laughs> we're here. We're you're, we're here. We're going to be doing uh, the podcast for the next couple of weeks on Zoom, which honestly is better because, my God, that. Uh, and let me tell you. Let me t- let me just give you an update on the booth. Yeah. Okay. I think mm-hmm. every single one of the mics is broken now. I think all of, this Hell is yeah. the podcast booth we use at uh, the the studio we rent. Uh, it's it's um. I think now there is a uh, one of those oil barrels that's that's on that uh, has a fire in it. You yeah. know, that people use to warm themselves. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. in there. Everyone weirdly has fingerless gloves. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like, <laughs> it's like old, it's like old timey, you yeah, know, in there, you know, timey. like uh, yeah. hobos. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's bad. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we'll be doing that on Zoom. I, you know, one thing, if it's okay to talk about <clears throat> yeah. is, uh, you know, you are going through, it's, it's interesting you've mentioned you know, when, when you pass away, you know, as we all will, you know, you leave all this stuff, you know, and the, uh, the biggest 
thing you take away is is you know you leave all these people behind who love you but yeah. now they also have to deal with all your shit yeah <laughs> and yeah. you're you're on zoom right now in your dad's uh old office yes and you're telling me about how you're kind of having to disentangle all these things he managed and it's even doubly hard because there's not a big family and because yeah. it has to be bilingual yeah and i wanted to know if you share whatever you want out of that yeah yeah I have so many thoughts and I realized I started talking and I had no structure to anything. So thank you for structuring it. No, 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 um, no. This is good. Yeah. Yeah. So right now I would say I'm in admin hell. I always <laughs> say like I, I walk past a picture of my dad and I'm like, I love you, but I'm so annoyed with you right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but basically there, he was not prepared to die. <laughs> it's yep. such a crazy thing to say, yeah, but no, it was like yeah. truly was sudden. And so um, he was still working, uh, but he works alone as an accountant. Um, he, he, and has so, his, he has his own kind of like thing. Yes. I, it's not yeah. even like an LLC. Like I will say comedians are probably more like, I don't know, business, <laughs> like have their own like setup. It's, it, My, it's like, all, it's all legit, on Venmo. It's extreme. Yeah. Like you can pay <laughs> yeah. him and drink tickets. It's totally fine. <laughs> like I'm kind of our family. None of us knew. Like I'm one of three siblings or kid children, and then my mom. And like I'm gonna be very open. He did everything alone. He did not yeah. like talking about. I think the thing about him is that he is very kind and warm, but at the same time lazy in a way where he doesn't. If mm -hmm. he can do it himself, he rather He'll do it do himself it. Yeah. than to explain it to anyone or to delegate it, which yep. is great if you need client services and you yeah. um, don't want to do any part of it because you'll just give it to him and he'll do it right like I yeah, know close to nothing about taxes because my dad has always done everything for me tip to taint like just like did everything you know yeah um, and so he kind of babied everyone um, us included but also like if you're one of his clients he babied you I'm sorry he, his clients are older they're not going to be listening to this but like they <laughs> um so it was it it was really organized for him, but yeah. not organized for anyone else. And so, yeah, um, what we're doing now is like not only cleaning up our family stuff, which he also was not prepared for, um, but which we also don't know anything about because he never told us anything. But we're also cleaning up his business, and on top of that, uh, it's accounting stuff, which I know nothing about. And on top yeah. of that. It's bilingual. So like emails come in Japanese and in English, which I can like read some of, but can't really write back in. And like, I can like, wow. can't talk business language in the same and, way. And, and yeah. so it's like, and, yeah, it's just like this, like very specific little experience that I'm having of like trying to, I feel like a detective. Like I just watched yeah. National Treasure 2 with my sister <laughs> as like a de-stressor. And they're like, everything is like this. Well, he once said something about that. And that line probably means oh, we have to go to Paris and unlock the code under this, like the Oak desk or whatever. And that's literally <laughs> what we're doing right now. We're like, this, this number looks like it could align with that thing. And like, we're like just right. trying to like backwards calculate everything. Um, yeah. You just convinced me to watch national treasure uh, two, by the way. And yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. This is national it's horrible, treasure three. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, the uh, adventures in Aramoto's in, business. Yeah, and mm. and um, Aramoto CPA work. Um, but yeah, and, and you're not, you're like, not uh, obviously you're not like continuing his work, right? You're like you're like no. okay, no, we you you you're, you're informing each of these clients one by one. Yeah, um, and I think that, there's a fundamental fundamental misunderstanding that we understand anything that they're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> they will yes. respond back and be like, well, okay, about, so yeah, what about my I believe Roth that there's 15? a deadline. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, I, I believe there's I a deadline really... for corporations by this date. Could you please confirm? And we're like, I, I want no I'm like about, about to send crazy. the link to my Instagram. Like, <laughs> just look at me. I don't know. Yo, anything. drop a follow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't like, help it... you incorporate your uh, your business and your overseas yeah. <laughs> properties, but hey. <laughs> Smash that like button. <laughs> yeah, smash that like button. I'm also like, should I send them a picture of me holding my political science degree? Like, I need <laughs> them to know that like who they're talking to is me right now. I'm I like, feel that's that's the way you should send them a fax with your 
with your political science degree and they'll, and they'll <laughs> yeah. immediately get it. They'll go, oh, we're, oh, I'm pulling all my money out. This is, yeah, this cannot yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah. This girl thought she was going to help some senator run for some campaign. That's like when she was young and thought she could change the world with her, with her like work. That's the wow. person we're dealing with right now. So I just, um, it's been a very interesting experience. The other experience I think that's very specific has been, um, the fact that where family is really small, which I've talked yeah. about prior in other episodes is like, uh, you know, a lot of my family on my mom's side fully is in Japan. And then in my dad's side is split between Japan and Hawaii. And so when it comes to like our local family, it's just like uh, us, um, right. and has continually gotten smaller. Um, and like in times like these, I think we really, there, the conversations that I hear from people who maybe have their whole families here, is so different than our conversation totally. because it's mm -hmm. like, well, there's no one else to delegate this stuff to. It's like just me and my siblings. Um, and so like my dad's funeral, like people were asking like, oh, how was the funeral? I'm like, well, it was just like us. And then like right. some family from Japan flew in last minute. Um, but it's been very interesting to go through this being like, oh, well, we're just a little pod. Um, yeah. Because when I hear about like my other friends, it's like, oh, you know, they have like uncles, aunts, cousins who like show up and yeah. uh, can maybe help alleviate some of the stuff. It also, you know, probably feels just like a community effort. Whereas here mm -hmm. it's not, not a community effort. It's just like a very, very small Tiny community, community effort. Right. Yeah. I um, think um, you're absolutely right. I, uh, I remember when actually well, when my, both when my grandfather and my grandmother had died, you know, a lot of people showed up. Obviously we have a bigger family, yeah. And that I think helped. And then, you know, there are our family friends and all these cousins from second cousins kind of came out of nowhere. And then I remember at, um, you know, we're Catholic and you're supposed to kind of do this whole, I wouldn't say it's awake, but you kind of, you know, you sit with uh, the body and, and you're in church and you can get these, um, these like, like a group of eight to 10 Vietnamese women to come to your church and say yeah. the rosary out okay. loud and uh -huh. they do this for donations to the church and uh, and i was just thinking about oh i'm glad that they had to do they, we got someone else to do that because there's no one else, we're not going to be doing the rosary but it was yeah. just like an example of like you know you can just call on these external services in order to to like right, help right. you know your you know help, help them along you know yeah we don't yeah we don't have that as much and on top of that <laughs> we're like buddhist but only in death i don't yeah. know if that's a bad thing to say but like we're just like not yeah. really religious until like we have to figure out what the ceremony will look like and so like i legit didn't even know you're like, buddhist it's well, never come I, up yeah because i'm not really like yeah. i don't really know what to do in the service so they have to explain it every time like i'm just like don't know much um and like i would say like my dad was also not religious we're all kind of Buddhist only when there's a funeral. Um, yeah, and yeah. then my mom's side is like technically Shinto. I always like when people are like, what's your religion? I'm like Japanese. Like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> and so that's also been interesting because like, we don't have like a religious community to rely on that. Yes, at least we're yes. super deeply ingrained in. So it really is like kind of this like very small effort of like wow. us, like trying to figure out not only like personal like service, you know, that stuff, but also like the other stuff, like business, whatever. It's been a very interesting experience. Um, I think it's been a reminder that my family is very small. Um, yep. And like, that's okay. I think there's um, something sweet about a small family is that there is very little fighting because oh, that's good. there's no one to fight. Yeah. Um, you know, like the, the, your enemies are limited because there yeah. just isn't a big pool to pick from. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's been like very drama free on that front. Um, and very sweet that like my, even the fact that my Japanese family flew here so last minute, so expensive, you know what I mean? Like they, but they came here and like showed up. I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's what you have to do. Cause there's just so few of us. Um, yeah. and I only have two first cousins and we've like, we've like texted and it's like, we're also one of their, like they're, I think they have some cousins, but they're close to us. So it's like, yeah. we're just a very small family. And I will say the silver linings of these like types of situations is how much, at least for me, like I, our family has gotten closer, um, because of it. And every level, my, me and my siblings, my mom and her siblings, like yeah. everyone has just gotten closer because 
it, these are the moments where you reflect on your family and your relationships. Yes. And uh, yeah, you're, I think you're, it's been like... You're, you're watching National Treasure. Yeah, <laughs> you're um, watching National Treasure with my sister. It's talking a, about how many puzzles, how every, it's just puzzle after puzzle. It's just a lot of puzzles. And a lot of he, puzzles. And Nicholas P- Cage is never wrong. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like, I will say it's been stressful in a lot of ways, but it's not interpersonal. It's just like functionally like doing stuff. Yeah. But it has made me very thankful for my family. And I think, um, you know, we're like, if there's one thing about me, which you may have picked up on, it's that I'm very consistent. Like I just like, if I have to show up, I show up on time. I show yep. up always. Like I like, yep. I'm very like stable and consistent. And it's like very much a reflection of this family. Um, and I think I'm seeing it like on every level, like showing up for each other and like, just like prioritizing this stuff over other stuff. And I think like, I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. Um, so you're going to be out there for a while, yeah. for a little while longer. Mm-hmm. Not that much longer. I'm going to be back and forth. Um, I ha- I To be honest, I just miss New York. and um, You do? I, yeah, I love yeah. New York. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. <laughs> um, I miss New York. I miss the people. Um, I miss like living life, th- my own life out there. Because like my life now is really, it's there. Yeah. Um, and so like things are starting to like somewhat slow down. And so I'm going to like go back and then I'll probably come back here for a little bit again and just kind of yeah. be back and forth as things move. Um, but you, you do yeah, have I the, mean, um, you know, if I, if I can say you do have the yeah. perfect rom-com setup right now. Yeah. You know, big <laughs> life changes happening. I Jenny was, thought she had it all figured out. I literally but said, life. if I don't meet the love of my life, because, you know, like this has been a pretty concretely <laughs> bad year. Um, yeah. If I don't meet the love of my life this year, I'm going to be fucking pissed. <laughs> I'm going to be Excuse so my language. Yeah. I will be pissed. Um, and let me say that this has just increased my resolve to like get out there and like yes. find somebody because I'm like, it's like sad, but I was like, oh, my dad will never know whoever it is, the person I, if I do meet a person, they'll never get to like, see how awesome he was. So I'm like, I got to make sure they see, they see my mom and see how awesome she yeah, is. That's yeah, like yeah. such a dark thing. I'm, I was I'm like, trying to think if this is an appropriate thing to put onto your dating profile. You know, I don't like, think so. I will say I was just kind of beginning. I was like the week that the layoffs and stuff happened, I was like just starting to be like, let's get out there. And I was really ratcheting up downloaded tinder a couple days before you did wow i did and i had like a couple conversations going and i absolutely have not opened the app obviously since then sure. yeah. um and so i was thinking in my head how do i even return from a f- three-week leave <laughs> i mean <laughs> or like a month leave yeah. and explain like okay well it started because i got laid off and then <laughs> yes. my dad died hey i'm gonna um, tell you though if you're gonna look for a good dude a good dude's gonna be able to like weather that storm you know that's I true mean, that's what i'm saying i, mean, I don't know I, mean, I don't know storm. right away i don't know yeah. if it's right away after like after you know because you're joking around like ha, have you seen national uh treasure and then go right into that other thing <laughs> but you yeah. know i do think you know uh, it, this is a good te- test of resolve for uh the the second date i'll just say that second date. <laughs> <laughs> i mean honestly at this point like i'm so i can whatever i can handle it whatever like i'm just like i've gone through it all this year like i can handle a bad date now i feel yeah. very like so whatever about like those little things now um and i think it's also interesting this is the other thing i want to bring up everyone's like wow, I'm so proud of you, you know, like you're so brave, which is like very kind. Yeah. But I also think that part of this is like there, I think a lot of people, especially maybe more like Christian religions Mm. are like maybe people who come from those backgrounds. Um, Death is a very scary, like almost like this like heaven or hell mentality Mm. Um, and it's also like the end of something. And I think yes, it's so fascinating I because I was raised in a family that maybe saw death differently. Um, we saw it more as like, uh, uh, um, like your spirit and your soul is separate than your body. And so it, it, it like happens and everyone dies and we like have openly talked about death 
since a child not like in this morbid way but it's like it was never yeah. hidden from us yeah you're, so, um, you're sounding very wednesday right now yeah what's one like oh uh i did not watch wednesday okay but well, you get it okay go ahead <laughs> but i get it <laughs> um but yeah i think like i i grew i i grew up in this like household or maybe it's just being japanese i don't really know like cultural stuff but like it's been very fascinating like seeing people's maybe like um discomfort talking about death yeah. Whereas, like, you, I... You seem very comfortable. Yeah, I never have had discomfort. Like, I've always have been, like... I think it's part of life. And, like, isn't it beautiful that we're mourning this person? It means that we cared about them so much. But also, like, they're off doing their thing now. Like, you know, like, my dad's, like, off, like, probably chilling. Like, he had a heart that was really clogged and was probably really uncomfortable. And now he's, like, floating around. Like, he's hell chilling, yeah. Like, dude. He's, like, flying to, like, all the places you want to fly. Like, he's, like... <laughs> light and breezy and like watch you know all this stuff like i i'm like he doesn't have to deal with like the paperwork anymore he's like buy client emails like he's like probably living it up watching us like sorry but like i gotta do my thing you know um and so i don't know i feel like it's been very kind um and i i think it's been very fascinating seeing like how some people don't like like if i respond to the text kind of openly talking about it it's almost like mm -hmm. discomfort mm -hmm. and i thought that was really fascinating too because i'm like i wouldn't say i'm like 100 percent comfortable as you've seen i've cried already but it's like i think it's something that's okay to talk about because it's yeah. part of life and i think like it's something that we should acknowledge to live a a life that's full here while we're here and yeah. whatever um i also know my dad was like very smiley jokey repressed in his own ways but like you know just like very kind and i know that at the end of this he would be like not wanting us to fall into some sort of depression <laughs> he would want yeah. us to like go out there live your life have jenny fun. have fun I'm watch tv don't worry about exactly. me exactly exactly he's like don't worry about me you know so i love that's that. kind I of love, the spirit yeah i love um you know do, do you feel you know not to get kind of too new age on you do you feel like your dad is like around still is he is he he's gone he's 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 moved he's moved on to that big cpa in the sky i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um it's fascinating because i believe and once again i said i'm buddhist only in death uh the belief is like uh after they after someone dies they're like on earth for 49 days uh -oh. like their spirit is like here for 49 days and then after 49 days you do like another service and you like send them off to the, the other world or whatever sure um so it's like generally the vibes that we have right now is like he's probably right now like chilling or whatever but um when other times when our we've had family members die it's felt more like oh they're like here still like there's like mm. an energy that they're still like yeah. around and i will say with my dad we have none of that <laughs> mm. he peaced right like, away he's so like listen i don't got 49 days for real like okay so they got this a jacuzzi. Is gonna get, this I'm is going. gonna get really. <laughs> this is gonna get really specific. So just stick with me. Okay. I'm on TikTok constantly, oh, but I don't know if you were on TikTok <laughs> for the AI manga filter phase, where the a uh, AI manga filter was available in Japan and it was and then it like came over to America, and then um, in that process, this is so long. I uh, people started using it for ghost viewing stuff. Like oh. basically, people were like like people who could like feel energy um like feel like like presences sort of like just as a joke like using it to see if you could like capture things and the ai uh, man manga filter for real would start capturing people where there weren't people whoa um, and so i was like watching it over christmas uh when i was at home and i kept thinking should i do it here uh -huh. yeah, but then yeah. i was like i don't want to know if they're ghosts like if you're a ghost it's like totally fine but i don't want to know that you're here um but last night <laughs> the way I you was just like, said it too the, uh, yeah if you're a ghost that's totally <laughs> chill like, that's totally but like cool. you know like, like you know that's not my thing but like it's yeah, um, yeah. Hey, no judgment no judgment on being a ghost <laughs> that's like your decision you know like <laughs> like that's your decision and that's like who am i to like you know say anything about that that's not for me you know i'm i'm a i'm like, a capricorn yeah, yeah. okay yeah go ahead <laughs> wow okay and yeah so okay so so then like, the other day talking to my sister about that over christmas but i was like i'm too scared last <clears> night <throat> we were talking about how we're all like yeah like my dad has not shown up in any of my dreams like he has been truly like i had the week a week with him in the hospital i had this moment to like really say bye 
Yeah. Um, and at that moment, it kind of felt like he was there. Like weird things were happening with machines. I would see him like flinch when I talked to him. He started like moving and like wow. reacting to my voice. Like at that point, I was like, I think he's kind of like around still. Yeah. Um, like his body was alive, but I felt like his spirit was still around. Right. And then <clears throat> after that period, it felt very calm very and calm, yeah. like no regrets like just like very chill like i think we all said what we had to say like it didn't feel like this like oh like we were wronged or like yeah you know like oh like the time was not it like whatever it just felt like you know he had to go it was his time like and i'm i'm i felt like he went on his own terms which was like going on a walk um this walk sounds tight. Do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's like a very specific walk that he loved. And it was like a beautiful day when he passed. Like the whole yeah. week was beautiful. It was like, I don't know, like it all felt under his terms. Anyways, to go back to the AI manga filter last night, we're like, you know, it feels like he's not really here. And then I was like, should we try the filter thing? Like something that we had thought about not. And my, I was just like, okay. So we both took out our TikToks and we're like trying the filter all over the house. Right. And at first I was like, if there's, he's going to be anywhere, it's going to be in this office. He was always working. And so I like check. And at first it made the chair a human and I freaked out. But then I started checking from different angles and he was not here. I checked every other part of the house. It's like literally not another human. Sure. Like there are no That's spirits amazing. in this house. Right, right, right. And I was like, told my mom, I was like, I did this filter thing. I know you're going to think it's stupid, but I did this filter thing just to like see if maybe he's like chilling, you know? And my mom's like, he's not here. He's like, he, he like is so good. You know what I mean? Like, he's like feeling good. Like, he's no he's worries. He's good. out of here. He texted and I was me. like, yeah. Yeah. He's like, like, we all know. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And so it is like this very interesting experience where we're kind of like, we're sad, but we're yeah. also like, it sounded, it wasn't, it wasn't like this like crazy yeah. thing. <laughs> it sounded like he, you know, it, it, it it's like you know the the cheesy thing that people say you know live every day like it's like your last but it's like yeah. you know, he did the he, he did it he he's working he 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 uh uh did his little walk you know yeah. he gave you a little call and told you not yeah. to i mean to to keep doing comedy and i i i wonder if uh you don't have to tell us you know because you're going through all this stuff wouldn't be surprised if he left you just like a bag of money just like underneath <laughs> something he's like he's like the reason why he's so pee at chill right now he's so at peace is like i took care of my family and the gold will prove it <laughs> yeah know? yeah like, I mean, all this he, gold he i don't think he has a bag of money anywhere he would be he would be You're too right. cheap to do no. that uh, uh, because he'd be like, we gotta, we gotta do something with that. We can't just let it sit here. No, no, no you're with right. inflation, this isn't gonna. With this inflation, isn't building no way. On itself. No, I, yeah. I bought you a bunch of Camrys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So, like, I'm sure that's not it, but um, he really did take care of us. Like, that's he was. I know in another episode I talked about like my privilege and all of that, but I want to make it clear that like that was like my dad alone. Like it mm-hmm. was, um. And I only know this because I'm national treasuring all of our records right now yeah, and yeah. understanding where we started and where we ended. It's like Amazing. my, it really, he really was like of the boomer generation of like America is the country of like opportunity. Right, of and he of really course. worked really, really hard to do that. I apologize to him that I am a millennial who doesn't believe in a lot of these systems <laughs> holding up all for the our avocado generation. Toasts. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I am simply now trying to do comedy and live a happy life. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm like the, the thing that I've like learned in all this is like how hard he worked for us, which I'm like, forever thankful indebted to um and sorry that i instead i'm thinking about how i can make this a pilot <laughs> but like <laughs> oh my god i mean there i mean in the conversation we've had we've at least we've we've run into three great pilot ideas <laughs> one uh the, the comedian girl who moves from the big city back to the medium-sized city yeah uh and to you know and and we'll probably run into uh her her high school crush at some point while while going through you know actually maybe your yeah. dad was your high school crush's uh, uh, accountant. uh accountant and yeah. you have to go and deliver all this uh, news <laughs> to him and and you know and and he's upset at first and he you know he, who's going to incorporate my business and then over time you guys fall in love that's one <laughs> second I'm sorry, but a uh, 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 a rom com or or com- comedy called Forty Nine Days on Earth 
Amazing. Great <gasps> wow. idea. Right? Yeah. Ghost just, uh, you know, person passes away. Got 49 days to take care of a couple things. Before yeah. He's, before, he's got to do it before they do the ceremony. And then he's out of there. You know? Oh, my so God. That's, that's, that's so two. fun. Yeah. Yeah. We got great ones here. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> um, my dad's, like, probably listening right now, like, oh, my God, Jenny. Oh, come um, on. Come yeah, on. No, but- look underneath the drawers, okay? <laughs> There's a bunch of bear, bear bonds there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's been like very interesting experience. Like I think um, everyone is surprised at how well I'm doing. And I'm like, I think it's one of those things where like, like I feel lucky that I had a dad that was so consistent and stable yeah. and yeah. like in my life to begin with. Cause a lot of people don't even have that Yo, to start. Soft Asian and dad power. like, yeah. So soft he really Asian was like power. a great dad and uh, it's sad, but also like, I don't know. I feel very lucky to have, everything that I have. And I also feel like I've built a life that I'm proud of, or at least like, 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 I don't know if I'm proud of it, but I like it. Um, and so it has been also confirming that stuff. So it's been this very like interesting experience. And also everyone has, when I post on Instagram, if you're a listener, people, listeners are listening out, are reaching out. People were reaching out and like, everyone was so kind, like next level kind. And I was like, dang, like, this is awesome. (laughs) Like, I guess I, I feel lucky, but also it's in part like being so open about talking about this stuff has built kind of a foundation of like, I don't know, people feeling safe enough to talk, reach out to me or like, I don't know. There's something about it that I'm like, wow, I feel very lucky to be in this position too. Like that people are reaching out um, in this kind way, people were reaching out about other episodes too. And I, like, I just want like, everyone to know, I really do read everything. I just like, haven't, I just like, don't have it in me to respond to everybody, but like, yeah, listen, everybody. Um, okay. She's not getting back to the Tinder, <laughs> Tinder matches. Okay. She can't get back to you guys. I need to respond to my Tinder matches. Go back to uh, the Tinder matches and like have a fun, uh, I don't know, word play on, on, you know, where your next vacation is or whatever. I don't, I don't know yeah. what people do. Okay. <laughs> that's the worst conversation of my life. If that's what happens. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel just, this has been such a mixed, weird mixed bag of like a negative thing, but like mostly highlighting a lot of very positive things yeah. in my life. Um, and so yeah. I'm sure this will be a journey. Like I'm sure I will have a lot. It will be very hard forever, but that's life. And, um, You'll hear about it week to week because yeah. <laughs> I won't shut up. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can't uh, wait to have you back in New York City. We'll do something uh, or we'll, we'll finally go to Red Lobster. Yes, you know, please. Pour one out. Pour one out for your dad. And yeah. uh, and in the meantime, you know, you're, you'll are you you'll be doing stuff and we'll be bothering you and uh, doing all those and all those sorts of things. Um, thank you for talking to us about this. Yeah. I mean, you know? I had to. I can't just show up and pretend like everything is okay. <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> that would be wild. Uh yeah, but I'm I'm happy to. I'm happy to talk about whatever I can. And yeah. uh hopefully I don't know what everyone else's experiences are, but I was like, you know, everyone's experience is different, so I think it, it's also helpful for other people to like talk about it openly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you know, uh any it, it, if if you could text your dad Send him, a, yeah. send him a text if he was still around, if he still has service. Oh, my service. God. I've never texted my dad. Never? He doesn't know how to text. I'm like for <laughs> real when I say he never had his phone on. It's like, I'm not really? kidding. Even yeah, for yeah. your mom? Your mom would be, I'm no. sure your mom would be like, yo, you got to call, you got to turn your phone on. No. My, well, yeah, she said that and he'd be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is so alpha. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm like for real. I've never texted my dad. My dad has never texted me. Like everything is landline phone call. Okay. <laughs> so I'm like letting you know how analog <laughs> my dad was, <clears throat> which was like very annoying in a lot of ways. Yeah. But it's very, um, you know, he had a brand. You know, he still uses AOL. It's like his brand is strong. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's 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 great. Um, well, again, thank you for for doing that. Uh, this has been the Asian Asian podcast. Uh, we'll be back uh, back to our regular nonsense really soon. Uh, you know all the usual stuff. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Just it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> be chill. You know, love your love love your loved ones. Um, 
and yeah use that tiktok filter to see if there's any ghosts around you. yeah let me know yeah. if anyone has seen any ghosts with that filter um well, so that's actually real, what the takeaway is from this hold on real <laughs> quick though so when you do use that and you find a ghost do they look dope because it's manga filtered yeah yeah they look <laughs> like like manga people but i will say i've seen some where they're like consistently like women wearing black dresses oh fuck off fuck off like emo manga emo manga so okay. it's like it's like cute but also really scary <laughs> that's Do you know what i'm saying uh yes absolutely yeah. absolutely um well again thank you very much jenny uh and thank you to our listeners um we love you guys uh anything yes. else jenny that's all um well, I'm thanks sure we'll for talk sticking about around yeah, of course. yeah i'll be back yeah. You'll be back. You'll be back. All I'll right. Be back. And, yeah. and bring it and bring in and bring in the funnies as usual. All right. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.